Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this afternoon's preparedness uh, tech talk on intelligence driven resource management and mutual aid planning tools. We're going to go ahead and get started today. Uh, and just for some basic housekeeping and webinar prep. Uh, due to the large audience, all participants are muted for the duration of the session, and this just helps to prevent background noise and all of that. Um, additionally, you can use a QA and a uh, function within Zoom, so that should be accessible to you. You can click on the Q&A, and you're welcome to ask questions to the whole group. Uh, we will uh, address questions at the end of today's webinar. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. Excellent. Well, uh, my name is Rebecca Harnett. I'm with the National Alliance for Public Safety GIS Foundation. And joined with me here today is Trisha Lawson, also with NAPSIG Foundation, and Charles Letcher, who is one of our developers who has supported this effort. And he'll be on the line later on as well to answer any questions that developers may have uh, about using the code and some of the resources that we'll be making available to you all today. Excellent. So given that we are currently in a response mode um, with COVID-19, I did want to mention to everyone some key resources that are being made available uh, to support local and state and county and tribal agencies in their response to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and we have a number of different resources on our website that I just wanted to highlight for you the link to that. Uh, you can see it right up here. It's napsigfoundation.org uh, resources COVID-19. On there is a map where we are, have been compiling all of the state level uh, websites and state level geospatial resources that are publicly available for each state. So that is this map that you see with green. Each of the green states um, have a number of different resources available. Additionally, there is a COVID-19 GIS hub that is being managed in, by uh, ESRI as a part of their disaster response program. And then there are resources and capabilities for both law enforcement agencies as well as fire service agencies being made available. Um, that includes a method by which you can report on personnel impact and PPE for your fire, EMS, and law enforcement, as well as gain situational awareness on personnel impact and PPE of those first responder agencies across the country through publicly available dashboards. So just a couple of mentions there. Additionally, we will be sending out weekly update emails regarding new uh, and updated COVID-19 resources as they become available. Great, um, so I just wanted to run through some of our objectives for today. Uh, so you will, through today's Prep Tech Talk, you will learn how to gain access and use a new risk-based mutual aid planning tool that will equip, equip you with critical information as well as risk-based information that can improve your resource management and planning processes. And to note, the, the tools that are, uh, we'll be sharing today are really designed for that preparedness phase. So blue skies, clear skies, uh, planning efforts around resource management as well as potentially mutual aid. You'll also learn about best practices and using a core set of data and analysis that will provide you with valuable intelligence in that resource planning process starting with risk assessment and moving into strong readiness posture, as well as response operations and helping with that transition from readiness and into response. You'll also gain access to a developer toolkit that you'll be able to work with your agency's technologists and developers to customize the tool to meet your unique needs, integrate your agency's resource inventory data as well as any local data that you may want to integrate. So our agenda today is we're gonna provide those who are new to our organization with a bit of an introduction to NAPSIG Foundation, and then we'll move um, into a background on resource management and mutual aid efforts at NAPSIG. And then Trisha will spearhead a resource management planning tool live demonstration 
uh, that she'll go through all the functionality, how to use it should be all you need to be able to start using the toolkit today, uh, as well as walk us through a toolkit for the developers and technologists. We'll talk a little bit about what's happening with integration into the National Mutual Aid System uh, through IAFC. Uh, and then we'll talk about just some next steps and opportunities for you to provide feedback. Great, um, so just very quickly some background information for you. So NAPSIG Foundation uh, was established about 15 years ago as a nonprofit organization. We have a 20,000 member network of public safety leaders, first responders, and technologists and GIS uh, practitioners from across the whole community, local, state, tribal, territorial, uh, federal and NGO partners. And we're governed by a independent board of directors that's comprised mostly of public safety and emergency management industry leaders. We were also established as an alliance over 15 years ago by all of the different organizations that you see uh, on the slide today. So in terms of our national, uh, our local focus and national reach, we have that 20,000 member network, which all of you are a part of. Um, and then we also work with approximately 12 primary national and international associations that reach across the different disciplines and level of government. Uh, and we do engage and interface with private sector. Additionally, I wanted to share with you just where everyone is coming from who's joined us today. So we have a great distribution of participants across the country. In this map, you can see all of the orange and red dots represent where all of our participants are from today. So you can see we have great geographic uh, representation reflecting that national perspective. And then over here, you can see the breakdown of participation by level of government. Uh, so we have the vast majority of you are from local agencies. We also have good representation by state, NGOs, federal government, tribal nations, as well as private sector. So really good um, diversity of folks. And then in terms of primary discipline, we have strong representation today by emergency management, search and rescue, fire service, law enforcement. So really great cross section of folks and we really look forward to your questions as well as um, insights and feedback that you're going to want to share about the tool as well. So what we're about and what we're trying to accomplish as an organization is focusing on that full spectrum of preparedness through response and into recovery. So fundamentally, we work to ensure that first responders, operators, leaders, and decision makers have access to and know how to use the right actionable information at the right time. So it's not just about information for the sake of information, it's the most actionable and relevant information at the right time. And that's a relevant theme that we're gonna talk about today uh, when we go through this resource management planning tool that you're gonna gain access to uh, and have, and have full, full capability to use. So what we do as an organization, this uh, slide basically just outlines kind of what we provide out. So national guidelines, policies, standards, defining and promulgating consistent best practices, which is ultimately what we're working to achieve by way of releasing this resource management planning tool, as well as the developer toolkit to help you to consistently uh, apply a standardized model and framework for doing your resource management and mutual aid planning. We also conduct exercises and simulations that help to foster regional collaboration, uh, both local intrastate regional collaboration as well as nationwide collaboration. And then we also provide a number of different education and training opportunities to help build capacity in using and applying the latest innovative technologies. And from time to time, we do provide technical assistance, which we're currently doing right now to support COVID-19 response. Um, but this is kind of the tip of the spear. We hope that everything we do from national guidelines and exercises and education are, are really the majority and the bulk of our efforts as an organization. So I just wanted to mention to you all, uh, with regards to that, we have a number of different resources and guidance and tools that we make available, 
And those are all available in NAPSIG's resource library. So you can access the link here and above is just a screenshot of the interface for that um, resource library. And with that, I'm going to shift and move into our conversation with regards to innovative mutual aid policy and technology, which is uh, where we have developed this mutual aid and resource management planning tool that we'll be demonstrating today. Uh, this is an initiative that NAPSIC has had underway for the last five years. And we've really worked on building from lessons learned in recent incidents and exercises to address some of the most pressing needs and requirements around innovative technology policy for mutual aid identified by the first responder community. So really a locally driven effort. And so we've gone through a number of related initiatives. Some of you may be familiar with things like our national mutual aid technology exercise, um, and we have a, as well as a variety of different guidance out there, such as the guidance for implementing information sharing standards for crisis management and mutual aid technology. And then we have this effort that we'll be going through today. So what's the challenge that we have as a community at the local level? Fundamentally, we know that resource management and mutual aid are critical for effective unified response to and recovery from emergencies and planned events. And that spans all uh, types of incidents as well as scales of incidents, be it uh, the most localized structure fire, all the way on up to where we're at today with a nationwide and frankly global pandemic. Many mutual aid technology systems are in use today. And one of the challenges that we've experienced with that is that there's no clear national standard or framework by which those different localized systems can be integrated to support operational workflows. And that's one of the things that we're hoping that this common and standardized uh, resource management and mutual aid toolkit will help you to accomplish is building towards that national standard and framework. So the process that we underwent in terms of developing um, the, what, what you'll see today in a live demonstration started about a year and a half ago uh, when, when we began gathering requirements um, from local stakeholders as well as state level stakeholders to ensure a national perspective. So we convened a targeted working group. We expanded that out to include some additional folks, but provided here is a, um, just a listing of who that core working group was that helped us to gather the requirements and, and we socialized this with a, a broader group of stakeholders as well through a number of different virtual meetings, live demonstrations, and even an in-person stakeholder workshop or work session back in March. Additionally, we did a larger um, exercise and feedback session in uh, November of 2019 that involved upwards to about 50 stakeholders. So, so your participation today is our next step in the socialization and feedback process. At the same time, you're actually going to gain access to this tool set. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to both use a, a new capability as well as inform something that is going to be improved upon. Um, just a couple questions here in terms of is DHS and FEMA been a member of this? Uh, we have actually engaged with both DHS and FEMA throughout the development process, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but I will emphasize that this has been developed as a locally driven capability as opposed to a federally driven capability. So we've certainly interfaced with them and coordinated with both DHS and FEMA throughout this development process, but we still wanted to ensure that this is being driven by locals and local, state, tribal, territory uh, level stakeholders. Great. And um, with that, I'd like to actually hand this over to uh, Trisha Lawson. Um, I believe I was missing a slide here. Um, Trisha Lawson, who's going to walk us through um, the process in terms of mutual aid planning steps. Trisha? Hi, Rebecca, thanks. So throughout that working group and the series of virtual meetings and in-person meetings, the group decided upon a, a six-step process for mutual aid planning, which started with resource management. In essence, 
identifying a hazard, identifying your location, and understanding the impact to your community. And this allowed for resource management, which is what we decided we would kind of tackle with our first implementation of the resource management planning tool. So you can kind of go ahead and skip ahead, Rebecca, if you want. Yeah, so the next steps would be working this into more of a mutual aid type of tool. You can keep on moving on if you want. So these three steps are what we decided we would tackle here, identifying the hazard, identifying the location, and understanding the impact. So if you want, I will just jump right on in to the demo. Can I take control of sharing? Thank you. Can you guys see the planning tool? Or are you seeing? Yes, we're seeing your planning tool. Trish. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So some of you might be familiar with the RTS Online Situational Awareness Widget. So you'll probably recognize the layout of the resource management planning tool. So this tool, users can walk through steps one through three of that workflow that we just discussed and if needed, can explore some additional impacts to their community. So let's just jump in with the demo here. First, I can select my hazard. So I am down in San Diego. So I will actually select wildfire hazard exposure. Now, these nationally, nationwide data sets are for hazard exposure. And they're actually the same data sets that are used in the Hazard Explorer tool that's also found in FEMA's prep toolkit. Now, if you have locally available uh, risk data or any other type of hazard data that you'd like to utilize, you're more than welcome to use it in this add data button and you can just add your um, information from ArcGIS Online straight up into the tool. So now that I've got step one, I'm gonna move to step two and find my location. So I'm down in San Diego, we will there. Give this a second to run over. Okay, so now to explore my impacts, I have a couple of options for running the widget. I can select these three buttons and I can hit set location. And the tool will run. And since the hazard, or sorry, since the wildfire hazard seems to cover most of my whole county, I can just run it for my whole county if I'd like. Or if I'd like to draw my own polygon, I can do that here. I can also buffer my polygon. I can draw a line and buffer. I can draw a point and buffer. And if I had added any of my own hazard data, I could do the exact same workflow here and select the polygon and then just select those three buttons. I can also just uh, select this impacts button here and the tool will run on the bottom as well. We have a couple of options for that. So let's now walk through the information needed to that the group decided. So the group that we met with came up with a list of data sets that they decided were important for resource management and mutual aid planning. We then took that list and we crosswalked it to nationally available data sets. Most of these data sets that you'll see are available through Highfeld. Some are just available through the CDC, the SVI, which we'll show in a second. And as more nationally available data sets become available, we will continue to add to the tool. But we are trying to parse down the information to relevant information for mutual aid and resource management. So let's just walk through these a bit. When we first utilized the situational awareness widget, all of the information was really busy down here. So we decided we were going to group this by lifeline and add in an extra bucket for special needs populations. So we can kind of categorize this data by special needs, communications, energy, food, water, shelter, health and medical, hazardous materials, safety and security, and transportation. So we can just walk through a few of them. We won't take you through everything. But for example, 
the group determined it was important to see population information. So we're using the CDC's Social Vulnerability Index data to gather population information, populations over 65, under 17, populations who might not be speaking English well, um, households with no vehicle. We're also able to pull in data on location and number of schools, location and types of prisons, um, nursing homes were deemed important for mutual aid planning, as well as mobile home parks, child care centers. So at any time, I can just come on back to my original tab here, and I can move through any of these. So for health and medical, it was determined that it was um, important to show dialysis centers and their locations, and hospital types and their locations as well. So I won't uh, bother going through all of those for you guys, but that's kind of the gist of the tool. And if at any moment in time I want to maybe take a look at something else, I can add in additional data sets in here. I also have a legend that I can turn on and off. If I would like to maybe take a look at the emergency response guide, we have that widget up here as well. So I can take a look at uh, spillage data and plume modeling. I, as we discussed earlier, I can add any data that I might need. I can also use the grid overlay if interested for using this for some more operational type work. And of course, I can also print all of my results, which will also print the results from the situational awareness widget down at the bottom. Okay, so that was a pretty quick run through of where we're currently at with the resource management planning tool. So, Rebecca, anything else you want to add in here? No, I think that's a great demonstration and walkthrough of the capabilities, Trisha. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so that leads us to what is next for the resource management planning tool. Rebecca, do you want me to just kind of share slides here or do you want to take over? Uh, I will share my screen right now and just have okay. a little bit more background for folks. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. So we're going to share with you kind of what's coming up next. I just want to be sure that folks can see my screen okay. Trisha, are you able to see my screen okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Outstanding. Um, and to give you a sense of, so why did we create this? We know that there's um, a few different uh, tools out there today, uh, but do they actually meet those needs and requirements that our stakeholders identified for resource management planning and mutual aid planning specifically um, at the local level? So I, I just wanted to share some, how did we get here in terms of the demonstration that you just saw? So we did a pretty extensive review and assessment of existing planning related tools that are available in the more or less in the public space, meaning they're not necessarily sold by a particular vendor or anything like that. Um, so provided here, you see a list of some different tools. Um, they are not all necessarily designed for mutual aid and resource planning, but they certainly included functionality and data and information that does support uh, resource management and mutual aid planning. So we did include them in our review and analysis to really try to understand, does something already exist out there? And if so, what is it? Um, and if not, what, how, how does what exists today differ from what the community needs? Additionally, we also did a review of uh, available risk and resilience indices and data. So if we have any GIS folks that have joined us today. I'm sure you would appreciate this uh, review that we did because there has been an emergence of different risk and resilience data sets, indices, as well as social vulnerability indices as well that we really wanted to better understand so we knew what exactly can and should be used to support resource management and mutual aid planning. Additionally, we took a really hard look at the information requirements. You may have heard of things like essential elements of information or core information requirements. But ultimately, we, by working with our stakeholders, there was this umbrella of resource management information needs. And as you can see, this looks a bit chaotic. There's just so much information that's needed to drive that resource management and mutual aid planning process. But as you all know, too much information can be paralyzing, even in the preparedness phase, even in the planning process. 
So from there, we worked with our community to really identify and prioritize what are those core information needs that need to explicitly drive resource management and mutual aid planning. And they broke it down into the categories that you see here. So as you can see, this view of information is far more manageable and digestible to an average local agency looking to do resource management and mutual aid planning. And so this was what really these information requirements is what drove the development of the resource management planning tool that Trisha just demonstrated for you. So with that, I think, Trish, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, how to access it and, um, you know, how that's going to be served up publicly? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Rebecca. So the resource management planning tool is available on the internet right now. The link is right on the screen, rmpt.napsigfoundation.org. We will be sending out the links to everybody after the call today, so no worries about writing everything down. This is also available straight from the NAPSIG Foundation's RTS Online homepage, and there's also an RTS Online item page, so it's also searchable through RTS Online, just in case you do lose that link. But we'll also be throwing this up on our website, and we will be sharing all of this information with everybody right after the call today. Excellent, thank you. So I think we've already walked through kind of this planning process. So the tool that we've shared with you is really designed to support the steps one through three. However, as an organization, we definitely acknowledge the need to complete that process for resource management by identifying resource needs, assessing available resources, and then implementing. So this is where that integration of the resource management planning tool with your mutual aid systems is so important and so valuable. Um, in a publicly facing tool like what Trisha just demonstrated for you, we can accomplish steps one to three, but it's really your systems that accomplish steps four through six. And we, when we converge these capabilities and, and integrate them is when we're gonna have the greatest impact. So one of the first systems that we've started to work with and in that integration has been with the National Mutual Aid System, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so this is where it's, we've been able to work with the IFC and the National Mutual Aid System to integrate that resource management planning tool so that it's a part of the existing NMAS system. And so that's currently in development, but it allows you to bring all that rich risk and hazard and, and other key information requirements together with whatever resource data uh, agencies may have entered in and used NMAS to inventory, and then be able to assess and look at available resources, identify gaps, and help to drive their requirements, be it you know, through mutual aid or investment of additional resources. So this is just um, a really quick view of how uh, the resource management planning tool is being integrated within that NMAS system to give you a view. Um, currently it's in the NMAS exercise environment, but we, um, you know, even as we talk today, we're working hand in hand with that team uh, to achieve kind of full scale integration. And one of the differences that you can see here and the version when it gets integrated in a mutual aid system like NMAS is it has that add resource button right there. So after you go through the process of selecting your hazard, your location, assessing your impacts, you can add your resources and that enables you to see your resources in context with that hazard and in impact consideration. So our plan currently in working with the NMAS team is that full integrated capability will be available within NMAS if you are already an NMAS user in the fall of 2020. If you want to know more about that full mutual aid uh, capability uh, available through NMAS, I've included the link there. But what I want to mention to you is that RMPT is available in the public version that Trisha just demonstrated for you and that we'll be making available to everyone. So that's fully publicly available. Additionally, it's also available to integrate into any system. So it doesn't have to just be NMAS. 
So NMAS just served as an example and an initial opportunity for us to test and prove that this can happen and that it drives value to the locals. So RMPT is agnostic and interoperable with any and all open standards-based resource management and mutual aid technology systems. So we can certainly work with any of you to you know, provide some level of technical assistance if you're looking to integrate that. And in a moment, we'll share a little bit about the developer toolkit for that. Uh, the application and the code, even the raw code, is available to all agencies and organizations. Uh, it's available publicly at no cost. Um, and to kind of add on to that, there's no licensing agreements or costs associated with using either our web-based tools that Trisha demonstrated, as well as the code that we make available in the developer's toolkit. So with that, um, I'm going to actually ask uh, Trisha to walk us through and talk a little bit about that developer toolkit for our technologists who are joining us here today. Sounds good, Rebecca. Do you want me to share a screen to show the GitHub or just going to walk it through here? Yeah, why don't you feel free to share your screen? That'd be okay. great. All right, are you seeing the uh, NAPSA GitHub account? We sure are, yes. Perfect, thank you. So, as Rebecca had stated, we are sharing all of the custom development code for the custom development for the web app builder on top of ArcGIS Online right up in our GitHub account. So that's available as we speak. We will also be sending out these links to everybody after the call, so no worries about trying to remember to write all of this down, but it is in our NAPSA GitHub account. We've got a wiki set up with a bit of information about the tool and about the integration, and then you are actually able to kind of scoot over right into the code and download anything you need straight from here. Now, I understand as you know, an emergency planner or a fire chief, this might not really be right up your alley, but if you guys have uh, staff with uh, development experience or even maybe GIS analysts who have experience doing development work on top of ArcGIS Online. This is a really great resource for you guys to kind of start that conversation with your technologist staff in, for integrating into your own workflows. And I think that is a, like a pretty good overview of where you can access the tools here. So Rebecca, I will stop sharing if I can find the button. There we go. Excellent. Thank you, Trisha. So I think that was a great walkthrough of that developer toolkit. And as I mentioned, this is all publicly available on GitHub and we will provide everyone. So with the, the links to all of this. So if you are, you know, a fire chief or an emergency manager and you're like, wow, this is great. I want to be able to integrate this into my agency system and I want to be able to customize it. The important part is that you don't need to know how to use the developer toolkit. You just need to know that the toolkit exists so that you can work and hand it over to your technologists, your IT staff, your developers, and that will enable them to be able to do what they need to do um, to make that happen for you. So, just something I wanted to translate for folks to understand kind of what this means and, and how to leverage it. So another piece here is that we really want your ideas and feedback on the resource management planning tool. Uh, this is really important. The version that Trisha demonstrated for us is a version 1.0. So we are just, um, you know, getting started and launching this. You're the first group um, that we've actually reached out to, uh, you know, beyond our, our targeted stakeholder groups over the summer and into the fall. So as much feedback uh, that you can provide to us, uh, the better. We have a, a questionnaire stood up and you can you know, link and we'll also send this link out following today's session. Um, so the idea is that you take a couple minutes and use the tool, play around with it, and then complete a short questionnaire providing your feedback. And we will be keeping this open for a while. So if you start to use it in your planning process, because you're certainly welcome to, um, you can provide us with feedback you know, at any point. And ultimately, any enhancements and improvements to RMPT will be made based on your input. Uh, so I can't express how important that is. Uh, this tool is 
designed and developed by locals and for locals. So, you know, your continuous input is incredibly valuable to us. So with that, um, I, you know, I'm going to make a couple of announcements and then we're going to shift gears and have, um, you know, some questions and answers uh, via that feature within Zoom. But I did want to mention that we have another upcoming prep tech talk um, on April 16th in partnership with NIST Public Safety Communications Research Division. It's on the future first responder accelerating public safety communications research. I suspect many of you will really enjoy that and get an eye into what is coming down the pipe um, in terms of the latest uh, mobile technologies, augmented uh, reality, automation, uh, and the tech space. Additionally, we are still planning our Innovation Summit for Preparedness and Resilience, October 27th to the 29th in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, at this point, given the timing, we fully anticipate that Inspire will continue. So do consider joining us uh, this year out in Salt Lake City. Um, so just a little bit of highlights about what's next. Um, Trisha already shared uh, those links with us. Uh, questions obviously can go to us, but before we do that, I did wanna take a few minutes and uh, just highlight the fact we have the opportunity for feedback and then I will um, take some different questions here in, uh, in, that we were seeing in the chat. So I'm gonna start with the bottom question, um, I believe from David, uh, is this only for the United States? And the answer to that is at current, yes. Um, this tool has only been developed for the US uh, and the reason for that is that much of the data that is used to drive this tool is um, only nationally available data. Uh, the same process would have to be done in terms of identifying all of the data sources from best available um, sources from, uh, from globally and that effort has not been undertaken yet. Um, I have another question with regards to ICS typed resources. Ultimately, um, within the resource planning toolkit, as well as if you were to integrate it in your mutual aid planning system, you can integrate any resources that you have inventoried. Um, certainly, we encourage agencies to use and apply NIMS resource typing definitions for, um, you know, which are NIMS ICS typing definitions, which apply uh, to many resources, but ultimately you can integrate your resource inventory containing any and all resources that are relevant to you in your resource management and mutual aid planning process. I have a couple of other questions that I see here today. Um, the question is, can multiple hazards be modeled? Is there any portion of the tool that might help users see how one hazard or threat could cascade. Um, so I'll actually, Trisha, I'll let you take that, that question if you don't mind. Yeah, that works. So right now in the mutual aid planning tool, we are not modeling the hazards within the tool. We are offering hazard exposure data um, for each, each particular hazard. You're more than welcome to lay multiple of those layers on top of each other. You are also more than welcome to utilize another tool for hazard modeling and then add that data into the mutual aid planning tool and the resource management planning tool. So there's a couple of ways you could do that, but the tool itself is actually not creating the models. Trish, did you actually want to share your screen and maybe navigate for a user, like where they would go to attempt to do that? Yeah, give me one second here. Let me get this back up. Share. All right, so are you seeing the resource management planning tool? Yes, we sure okay, are. Okay, perfect. So right now, these are hazard exposure layers, so they're binary. It's a yes or no, does the hazard exist? Is the exposure relevant? So you're more than welcome to add more than one on top of each other, but in terms of cascading events, let's see here, um, there's a couple of different options. The only modeling tool that we have up and readily available as a button is the emergency response guide, which you can walk through and I think uh, 
here we go. I thought my internet was getting a little slow for a second. So you're more than welcome to add that kind of modeling right in, or you can just go ahead and hit the add data button. So if I have information saved in my ArcGIS online, maybe I ran some um, Hazus models or something else that I have locally, I can just add that data right on into the map. And then I can follow that same process. So if, let's just say I have a, um, a separate polygon. I can just kind of select that polygon and I can set the location and I can run the tool. So there's a couple of options there, but hopefully that's, that's answering the question. Yeah, I think that that's a great uh, point to add. Um, and maybe what we can do is just highlight the fact that if you were to take the code that we've um, deployed in GitHub and integrate this in your agency's own system, you could certainly integrate a lot more data and information that you may have um, locally as well. Is that right, Tricia? Yes. Yep. And, and still have the same user interface, so which was very much designed uh, to meet the needs of local stakeholders that are non-technical. <laughs> so <laughs> designed to meet the needs of emergency planners, um, fire chiefs, operators, et cetera. Yeah, and Rebecca, that's actually a really good point. Like our goal here is to make this as simple as possible for that non-technical um, like user set, right? So if you do want some more integrated technologies, you want some more modeling, totally doable. You just gotta work with your technologist. Excellent, yeah, thank you. And I'll, we'll just keep this up. Um, we have a couple other questions here. Um, the, we have a question from Bill about how can I update my county data for the map? And I think this goes to some of what you started to talk about already, but maybe you want to elaborate. Yeah, so if you're looking to add in your local hazard data, again, all you have to do is use this add data button here. If you are looking to add local data down into your impacts button, very simply, you can just redeploy the tool. Well, maybe I shouldn't say simply, but you are more than welcome to redeploy the tool in your own ArcGIS online environment and with the custom customizations that we've done and with the code that we're offering through GitHub, you will have the ability to then set the parameters for what you want to see down here. So right now we are filling this tool with nationally available data sets, mostly coming out of Heitfeld. If you deploy this in your own environment, you would be able to set which information, which data sets are in here, and you can put it with any local data sets that you have, but that will require the customizations to be um, stood up in your own environment. Great. So hopefully that was some answering the county data question, Bill. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Tricia. And I think this kind of actually is an, a building uh, question here is, are there plans to integrate a quote, generate report functionality that may assist hazard mitigation planners in developing scenarios for their communities? So good question. Right now in the mutual aid planning tool, you can hit this download all button. And what it does is it is downloading a, <laughs> it is downloading CSV files for each of these data sets. If there is a reporting functionality that's needed, please let us know. Please kind of fill out our questionnaire that we kind of shared uh, a few minutes ago and express kind of how you would want that report to look. There is some reporting functionality. We just haven't really explored it fully yet until we kind of gather all of those requirements. Great, thank you so much, Trisha. Um, and I will just grab that link and uh, put that in there for feedback on that. That would be an interesting area um, for exploration as we look at additional features. I don't know, Charles, if you wanted to weigh in on anything with regards to that one. No, I, uh, I don't. Great, um, excellent. I think the other question that we have here is how the system decides about allocating resources in terms of a model or techniques which have been used in the system. So I'm actually gonna open up the slide deck here really quick and I'm gonna answer that question um, from one of the slides. And I think this is important to share because this was something that we discussed at length uh, when we were in the development process and working with um, 
the community in developing this tool is that it the resource management planning tool doesn't take the human analysis out of the process and i think that's really important so it's not um, as we would call artificial intelligence it's not deciding that allocation of resources that's something that the planner still has to do what this is providing you with is what you see from steps one to three it's allowing you to use data and intelligence around uh, your exposure to hazards alongside you know identifying that location understanding impact so you can get a general picture of risk um, as well as community level impacts and from that you can integrate that with your resource information, such as your resource inventories, but still as the planner, you still have to make that decision about the allocation of resources. We did take a look at potentially developing models around all of that um, to drive resource allocation, but when it was considered, it, when you look at it on a national basis, there are so many variables that are so nuanced in terms of how decisions are made about around resource allocation that vary greatly from one community in one part of a state to another community in another part of even the same state. Um, that it really, there wasn't a viable model to, to simply try to automate that. So it's important to note that this tool doesn't take that human side out of it. It's merely intended to provide intelligence-driven information to help the planner make those decisions using a data-driven approach. Hopefully that answers the question there. I believe those are all of the questions um, that we have today. Uh, Tricia, any kind of final thoughts or, or anything closing from your end? Um, I just really want to encourage people to take a look at the tool and provide us feedback. We really love hearing from our community and the goal here is to make this useful and usable across the board. So your feedback is very valuable to us and it will be taken into consideration. And I just want to say thank you in advance for anybody who will be <laughs> giving us some feedback and also thank you to our stakeholders that are on the call who have helped us to get where we are today. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Charles, any uh, closing comments from your end? Well, the uh, code that's available that's out there is built off of um, the developer version of Web App Builder. And the uh, it's, a, it's got a modified um, situational awareness widget. Um, that's that's uh, part of the value add. Um, I also I would like to say that the value, uh, in my opinion of the value of that is ability to select custom areas and, and we kind of uh, we went pretty fast over that but uh, imagine being able to take and select a, a certain area of your location and then overlay um, when we talk about reporting it's really a data visualization so I can imagine using that um, select area selection uh, and screenshotting it to put it to PowerPoints and that uh, even if you don't go to the extra step to implement it that I really see a, a value to the tool to understand um, from a different perspective, from a data visualization perspective about your community. That's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. Yeah, this, the developer toolkit is very valuable. And I think it goes to one of the last questions that we have had, which is, you know, do we have any plans to add some sort of decision support system to it? Um, and the answer is, is actually, as of right now, no, that's why we're providing the developer toolkit because we realize how much of this information that you all need to add is really locally driven information. And so you can take this common and consistent framework uh, and bring it into your agency's own decision support systems as opposed to us standing up one for the entire nation. Um, and I think that's an important distinction in terms of why we've taken the approach that we have with it so we are still providing a basic level capability um, that's publicly available, which Trisha demonstrated in addition to this developer's toolkit so that you can do what you need to do with it. With that, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I did wanna mention that the recording uh, 
from today, including video, will be available on our website within about 24 hours, as well as the slide deck uh, and the link to provide feedback and the link to the actual tool to play around with it. So we highly uh, encourage you to take the time to, um, to work with it, provide us your feedback, and um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. And with that, uh, I wish you all very well and that you keep safe and uh, safe and healthy uh, in social distancing <laughs> for the next 30 or so days. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on April 16th for our next Prep Tech Talk. Thank you all.